everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio and to our continuing journey on how to become a real artist. Today we're going to begin the process of picking apart the top 10 uh, problems or issues that we have in our painting that make our work look a little bit on the amateur side. So uh, we're going to try to identify those things and then move into figuring out the solution to the problem so that your work looks a little bit more professional and saleable and appealing. I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you have uh, painted a painting for a bride and groom and you've given it to them for a wedding gift and then you go visit their home six months later and they haven't hung it on the wall yet. That's a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? Or maybe some of you have actually uh, ventured out and bought the big white tent and displayed your artwork for the art in the park and uh, had no sales for one or two days. Ooh, that is really, really, really discouraging. So uh, let's figure out why, um, why your work might not be selling and, uh, and see if we can make it a little more appealing so that people will actually want to hang it on the wall. All right. Last week, I had a group of kids from my Wee Da Vinci Academy out of my Prodigy class. They came to my home studio and they sang a little song for you uh, to help you identify the number one problem with your paintings if they're really um, kind of flat and dull and lifeless. So uh, listen to this goofy song and uh, you'll get, if you're happy and you know it, stuck in your head in a really special way. And I'll be right back and we'll continue. Hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. And we have visitors in the studio today. This is my Wee Da Vinci Prodigy class. Hello, everybody. And today we are going to sing you a song so that you won't forget the most important mistake that everybody makes uh, when they first start out painting that make their paintings look amateurish. So listen up and you'll learn. Here we go. Are you ready, guys? Three, yeah. two, one. If you mix and mix and mix, you make mud. mud. If you mix and mix and mix, you make mud. mud. If you mix and mix and mix, if you mix and mix and mix, if you mix and mix and mix, you make mud. mud. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I hope that helps you to remember uh, not to overmix. And I'm going to show you here in the next few minutes what that means and how to avoid overmixing and making mud. mud. Very good. Okay, be right back. Okay, that was a little bit bonkers. Uh, the class was bonkers too, but these kids are amazing painters and uh, you know the kids start at age six and they go all the way through age 12 in my academy and they paint some amazing things. At the end of this video I'm going to show you some of their work so uh, don't forget to watch to the end and then you'll be able to enjoy them. Okay, so uh, so what is this over mixing? Mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. We tend to naturally want to do things like this. Stir, 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 stir. We love to mix paint together. We like to put our brush in the water and stir it around and do stuff. From the age of two and a half, my little grandson Oakley at two and a half came to grandma's studio to come and paint. And his little dog's name is Mochi. And he said, I said uh, to him, I said, Oak, oh, what's going on here? What happens when you mix all the colors together? And he says, it looks like Mochi poop. And I said, yeah, it really does. So we need to keep our colors clean. And so how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we don't use one of these when we are mixing paint. This is a palette knife, but I really would rather you call it a painting knife. Now, a painting knife is one where you pick the paint up off the palette and you put it onto the canvas like I've got back here. Okay. I've kept these colors nice and bright on this crazy abstract impressionist looking thing that I'm working on. Just for the sake of this particular video because I want you to see how bright these acrylic paints can be as long as you don't overmix them. Now on my palette I have the same colors that are on this canvas and I'm going to show you what happens when you overmix those colors. and. Uh, you're going to be a little bit sh surprised. Yeah, surprised. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab my palette. Hold on. All right. So on my palette here, I have 
some of the orange color, I have purple, I have a little bit of teal, and I have some yellow. Uh, they're um, bright, bright colors, just like what's on the, pal uh, the canvas behind me. And I'm going to show you what happens when you use this palette knife. Well, you could use a brush and do the exact same thing and make the same mistake. But I'm going to take a little bit of my purple here. I'm going to put it over here. And then I'll wipe it off. And then I'm going to show you here's a little bit of orange. All right, purple and orange. They're kind of opposite. Maybe I'll put a little bit of this. Uh, I'll do another one over here with the uh, with purple and yellow. Now, those are our complementary colors right here, purple and yellow. They're completely opposite to one another. And uh, I've got a little bit of, of teal down here. So we'll, we'll mess around a little bit. Okay, now, what I'm saying is those two colors together next to one another are really wonderfully vibrant and boy this that teal with the uh, the orange right up there wonderfully vibrant if you want someone to look at something you put that in the focal point all right but if you mix them together this is what happens okay so I'm going to take purple and orange and I'm going to just kind of marble them a little bit that kind of looks okay a little bit like that and then if I start to mix them, and I'm going to get a little more orange because I want kind of even color. And I go back and forth. All right. Now, if you're using a brush and you hit it more than twice, it begins to turn into what the kids just called mud. M-U-D, mud. And so the more I, I smash those paints together, the duller that color becomes. Now you might need a dull color for something just to kind of uh, not be too outrageous in something. It makes not too bad as far as a brown goes. But you've got two colors there that are opposite that kind of make mud. And then I'm going to now do the same thing with yellow and purple. Now the yellow and purple next to one another, beautiful, wonderful. But as soon as I mix them together and I keep mixing, the more I mix, the more I mix, you guys, the worse the paint looks. And it just starts turning into this goopy, gloppy, really ugly color. Look how fast it goes into this horrible mud color. I'm working in acrylic here, everyone. Uh, it should, you know, you think, well, that should be a nice bright color. Well, it's not. It's just absolutely super, super ugly. It's a nasty color. I don't like it. I don't want it on my painting. Um, not in this one anyway. Now the same thing, we're going to come down here to the purple and actually let's try purple and teal and see what happens. There's, or not purple, what am I saying? Orange and teal. This one might not be quite as bad. Okay, there you go. Uh, I start mixing down here and the more I mix, the more I mix, the more I have this really horrible nasty gray green color. Okay. So if you're looking for vibrancy, number one, don't put two complements together unless you're looking for a gray or a brown, okay? But on top of that, put this away, unless you're just applying it. So if I just pick that color up and pick the purple color up and marble that beautifully onto the canvas, that's okay. But the same thing goes if you're going to be if you're using a brush, all right? If I take my brush and I hit I try to paint a stroke on there. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see, is that you're putting, um, you put down a stroke of paint onto a canvas, and then somebody, and then you just hit it, and you hit it three times, and you just think, oh man, this feels so good, and you just keep painting over the same spot, this way, that way. Um, the, the third stroke will take out almost everything that you've put down and create a duller, uh, appearance. So don't hit it over and over and over and over. If you need to do that, get a separate canvas over here and just do that or paint your wall. You know, just paint your wall uh, over next to you and then paint your painting a little more carefully. All right, we're going to just add fresh paint and make sure that we don't just paint the tar out of it. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm trying to use good language here. So that's the main thing that I wanted to talk about on this one. Now we're going to cover that in the next, uh, in part two, I'm going to show you how to paint um, this beautiful uh, landscape 
that I just did out at Tamarack Resort. Ooh, we had a wonderful group of people out here and they came up with some fantastic uh, paintings of the Tamarack landscape. A Tamarack tree, everybody, is so bizarre. It's a pine tree uh, that actually is deciduous. It turns bright yellow and then it drops its, its um, little, you know, pine, piney things onto the ground. Okay, pine needles, hello got the word there okay it drops its pine needles in the fall and so uh, you get this big array of, of gold across the, the forest mixed in with some of the green pine trees that don't drop their their pine needles people come up and they think oh my gosh the whole tree forest is you know dying something some bug has gotten it. no it's just the tamarack tree but it's it's so pretty we just love it okay so we're gonna do that in part two and uh, I'll be back and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to show you how to keep those colors super clean and make this big, beautiful, wonderful tamarack autumn landscape. I'll see you next time we meet. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. All right. Bye-bye for now.